How's it going everyone? Andrew Robinson here, back at it with another Max MSP tutorial. In this video, we are going to talk about the super useful and helpful object, Hi. Hello, yes, that's the high object, and that stands for Human Interface Gaming Device. And what this lets us do is take a gaming controller, like uh, some, you know, classic joystick controller, like the one you see right here on your screen right now that I have and I'm going to use. And it lets us use that as a controller in Max MSP to do whatever else we want. So how does that work? It's pretty easy, actually. So we're going to jump right into it. First things first, we're going to create the high object. And I'm going to right click it and open up the help file and show you that it is actually so easy. This is the help file. If you unlock the patch down here like I have already, it's going to show this little hidden load bang. And what this does, what you see here, is that this load bang goes into this menu message. The menu message goes into the high object. And then out of this orange patch cord, um, we get a list that is a message format to dump out whatever devices are connected to our computer and fill them into this U menu. And all we got to do from there is in that U menu, select whatever controller you're having. And this is obviously a lot. Um, I don't even know what half of these does. I haven't even messed with half of these, but I do know that the one we want right now is our USB game controller. Uh, and that is the joystick that I have plugged in. And now I am going to click pull, which basically it's going to output the cue um, in every time you have to find. So here we have uh, pull 10. So it's going to be every 10 milliseconds, the data is going to output from high of whatever I am doing on the game controller. So that's kind of important to keep in mind, depending on how fast you want to cue the data coming out of the controller. 10 milliseconds seems to be like a pretty good starting point, especially if it's in the help file. So we're going to click that and you see I'm just clicking random buttons and we're getting some data out. So let's break this down a little bit more. What is this data coming out of our high object? Well, you see if I move my joystick, actually you don't see me moving my joystick, but I'm just moving my joystick back and forth, up and down, and you see uh, when I have it down here, we're getting like 9 to 127, and if I move it to the left, it's then negative 128. So we have a range of values there, and if I move it forward, it's also 9. So what does this mean? Well, to me, it looks like, what it looks like to me is we have a data going on our X plane, uh, left and right, which could either be 9 or 10, or we have data going on our Y plane up and down, which would be the other number. I'm not exactly sure which one it is. I can't tell from this help file. So we're going to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. We're going to first close the help file. We're going to, we're going to set up our own patch um, right now. So I'm going to just create what we saw in the in the help file. We're first going to create a U menu. We're going to take this right outlet right here, patch that into there. Actually, I'm going to open this big up for a sec. It's the middle outlet we want out of the U menu that's going to go into there so we can select our device. And then we're just going to send it the message menu and you can create a message box super easy just by clicking the M key. Our U menu now has the same list of stuff. We're going to select our game controller and then we're going to send it that poll message and we're going to also say poll 10 just because that seems fine. And if everything worked right, then we should be having the same results now, which we are values out. Everything's working. So cool. Um, now, if we really want to build this out and make this into a very versatile controller, we have to route this data that we're observing out um, to different parts of the patch. However, we want to use that. And the way to do that is with our route object. So we first were looking at 9 and 10. So we're going to type in route 9 and 10 into our object. And then we're going to get the data for 9 out of this outlet and 10 out of this outlet. I'm going to leave this message box here. I'm also going to attach one down here. Um, this one's going to show us exactly what is like the last output to come out of this. Um, and this is going to show us everything that doesn't match 9 or 10. Um, but these will show us what we do get in 9 and 10. So if we do what we were just doing, just moving the controller back and forth, we'll see as I move up and down that we get a change more in 10 than we do in 9. So that would lead me to believe that 10 is our Y data, uh, our Y axis when moving the joystick. And likewise, uh, 9 would then be the X axis. And I'm going to move it left and right. And we see it is, in fact, changing more on 9 than it was on 10. So, yeah, definitely the X axis there. So that's how we can, like, kind of start to parse out what is what, what these values mean, 
and um, start to make you know intentional controls with this. Let's click some other buttons now to see what else is on here. So I have this little uh, uh, trigger underneath the joystick, and when I click it in, uh, we get a five and a one now out of there, uh, or a zero. So that just means that this trigger is the is is its header is the five. And it's basically, you could think of it as a toggle. If it's pressed in, it's one. If it's unpressed, it's zero. So we just then add that number to our route and boom, it's gonna work so that this it basically moves all the uh, patch cords over. So this is now, if it matches five, it's gonna route out of that outlet. We copy this message box back here for our things that don't match. And now you see, as I click the trigger, it's coming out of route five and we still have all these other things that we can keep messing with. I'm moving this uh, slider down here that I have, and that gives us a range between 127, negative uh, 128 again, and that's, you know, that's data 11. So I'm just gonna add 11 here, and basically that's it. This is honestly the, the entire tutorial video. It would just be going through this and setting all of these up and parsing all of them out. But once you do that and you have all these buttons and you know what they do and which outlets they're coming out of, you can then start to map this data into anything you want. So um, just, you know, for fun, let's just do something real quick. Let's take an audio sample um, like I enjoy Jongly. That's a good audio sample. We're going to put that right there. We're going to patch it to our audio output. Um, we're going to turn that on. We'll just click loop on. And I think there's a speed message. Yeah, so speed. We'll do dollar sign one. And um, we'll just take our x axis um, and we'll scale from negative 128 to positive 127 down to negative one and positive one. And we'll patch that route outlet through that scale, which is gonna give us a floating value, which we'll patch into the speed message. So that's gonna replace this variable. So it'll be speed, whatever, whatever this value now is. And we'll patch that into there. So now we are controlling the speed of the playback of the sample with our X axis of the joystick controller. And all we gotta do is now tell it to play. So I'm gonna take this one or zero and just patch that right in there and that should tell it to play or not. There we go, I now have a joystick to actually control the playback speed of this sample. And let's just, for fun, let's just double this. Let's say negative two and positive two. So that way, if it's all the way to the right, it'll play forward twice as fast. All the way to the left, it'll play uh, backwards twice as fast, and then in the middle, is where it's gonna be normal speed. And that's it. It's hard to show a more like detailed video on this because it's going to really depend on the controller that you are using. But this is basically, if you have just like a USB game controller that you can plug into your computer, this is gonna be kind of the process for you getting that set up. You're just gonna use the high object, you're gonna load that U menu, you're gonna make sure you've got your controller selected, you're gonna pull that output data, and then you're gonna test all the buttons and route them out and get those values to do what you want to do. And I hope with that you learned something from this video. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe because that's really how I know you learned something. And I always really appreciate it when you guys do. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave that in the comments down below. And on that note, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching again. Bye.